Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Uh, if you're new here, my name is Cassie and on this channel I am primarily documenting my journey from working a 9 to 5 and being a part-time artist to hopefully being a full-time artist slash shop owner slash content creator. So if you're interested in following me along my journey, um, just kind of seeing like what a day in the life looks like, uh, maybe just some progress videos, um, I'm just sharing a little bit of my life and just what I'm going through and um, hopefully, you know, inspiring somebody to also pursue their dreams and not just settle for something that they're not happy with. So I don't know. Hopefully you guys will find this enjoyable. I also do tutorials from time to time, uh, different arts and crafts things, planning videos, how to make stickers, just all that good stuff. If it involves markers and pens and stickers and paper, like I'm, I'm about it, okay? Today's video is long overdue, but uh, life's been a little crazy. But today's video is long overdue and I'm going to kind of break down how things went at my first in-person market. So this was my first time ever selling by myself in person. Um, prior to this event, I had kind of shared a table with my friend at a local vendor event. I wasn't really taking it super seriously. Uh, it was her main thing and I didn't want to take over. So it was kind of a last minute thing for me to just kind of tag along and have a little space on the table to sell some stuff. Now, that was technically the first time I sold things in person and I did sell some stuff, which was a really good feeling. Um, didn't sell much, but I sold some stuff and uh, it was it was really cool. And I wanted to do it again, but I wanted to have my own table. I wanted to just go like fully go in there. So my, uh, if you didn't see my last video, it is uh, prepping for the Punk Rock Flea Market. I will put a link here and in the description. Uh, you'll be able to check that out. So I kind of go over like what I had to do to prepare, why I wanted to sell at that market specifically, the process of applying and, you know, getting into that and all that. But today I'm going to be kind of giving my review and thoughts on the experience of um, selling my art in person. So I'm going to insert some like B-roll, some footage that uh, my best friend James, God bless him, he was there uh, along with my husband Jimmy. But James was uh, videoing some stuff for me. And so 99% um, of the footage you're going to see here in pictures are from James. So appreciate that. So it was in Philadelphia at the Philly Punk Rock Flea Market. This was something that uh, I really thought would be a good kind of place for me to sell my particular types of things like, you know, spooky all year types of stuff, bats and pumpkins and lots of MCR stuff and MCR inspired stuff, punk stuff, just, you know, stuff that's a little weird, a little out there. Um, I really, I brought it all, like the stuff that has curse words on it, like I just, I, I brought it all out because... There are some places that I will be selling where I can't really come out and have something that says be who the f you are with f in giant, you know, letters, which is stupid, but I digress. Um, it was it was really cool to be able to just be free and like bring whatever. You know, I talk about it in that prep video, but I really put like it was really stressful preparing for selling in person for the first time because I just didn't know what to expect. I didn't know how many people would even stop by, how many people would purchase from me. There were so many little things I had to do to prepare. I'm going to walk you through the day of, okay? Because it was a little bit crazy. First of all, first thing in the morning, right? So we had to get up really early. Um, I believe load-in was from, I want to say 7.30 to 9.30. And they recommended arriving at like 8 o'clock or 8.30. So I said, okay, you know, let's get up. Let's try to be there by 8.30 at the latest. You know, it won't take a... a super long time for us to set up but I would just like to have a little bit more wiggle room so we got there you know so first of all before we even get to that we stepped outside of James's apartment and literally like we knew it was going to be one of the hottest days like the humidity was just <clears throat> so it was going to be rough we knew um heat wise so we got in the car and we headed there it's about like a 20 minute drive from uh from my friend's apartment and when we pull up, there's this giant line, like probably 50 cars, like all in a line, had their flashers on, just kind of sitting there. And uh, we quickly determined 
that that was people like me who were just waiting to get into the place to set up. Still not really sure what the big holdup was there and why it took so long, but that was pretty stressful uh, just because I wanted to get in there and like, let's get this going. Like, I'm so anxious. And by the time I actually got in there with my sh it was like 930 and the thing opened at 10. So that was some extra stress that I did not need. Regardless, we got through it and we got set up. I was really, really anxious and like running on adrenaline. Like I barely slept the night before. I was so anxious and nervous. I kept thinking of all the things that could go wrong. And then I just kept trying to calm myself down. Just think like, it's not a big deal. People do this every day. It's not a big deal. The worst thing that could happen is nobody buys anything and whoop de doo Okay, you're gonna be okay. Well, um, we, I got everything set up. We got everything set up. Jimmy and James were a massive help. Everything got set up. I was really happy with my display. And then people actually started walking up before I was even done putting my stuff out. Because again, I didn't get to set up until like it was open, basically. Um, don't mind the coffee from this morning sitting there. Just please, just ignore that. That's totally great in the background. Um, this is my life. I'm a mess, okay? So people started to, you know, come over to my booth before I was even done setting up. So I was trying to hurry up. And then I got back there and I just... I waited and people would come up and look, you know, and they'd say hello and then they'd walk away. And I had, a, you know, for the first like hour, there were people coming and looking at stuff. They would say, oh, I really like that. And that made me feel good. Um, it was really cool. I think my favorite part about the whole thing was like seeing people's reactions to my art in real time. Because normally like you post stuff online and customers, some of them really go out of their way to like leave reviews and take pictures and stuff like that. But most people, myself included, I'm guilty. I do, I do really, really try to uh, leave reviews and I try to post and tag the, the artists and everything, but I usually don't do it right away. But you know, to see a person like in real time, see your art for the first time and be like, oh my God, I love this so much. That's a really good feeling. So that happened, you know, again, the first hour people were coming saying hi, looking, but not buying anything. And you know, after like an hour goes by, I'm like, okay, this is what I feared. Like, you know, I did all this and I'm out here in this absolutely horrendous heat. And I've now wasted my husband's time, my friend's time. We're just gonna be standing here all day and I'm not gonna sell anything. And I feel like a failure. And like, I, I started spiraling. I'm spiraling, I'm spiraling. The thing was open from 10 to four. The fact that it was so Hot. It's too hot for me to wear this, so uh, somebody wear that. It's too hot. I, I cannot express to you how hot it was. Hot and humid. I Like, I can't express to you. The amount of water that we were drinking, constantly drinking water. Constant. Like, no breaks and never had to pee because it, we were just sweating. It was so bad. Um, So, I was really worried that the heat was going to keep people from even coming out. And, uh... There were a lot of people there. I, I was surprised, but um, I do know, you know, firsthand, like personally, at least three people who were going to come and then they, they just didn't because the heat was too much. I totally get it. If it were me and I was just going to shop, I probably would have woken up that morning and been like, mm, yeah, no, too hot. Too hot. After, you know, that first hour went by, people were still coming up. They were still looking at stuff. And finally, I got my first customer. Somebody actually bought something. That was a really good feeling. And you know, I turned to Jimmy and I was like, I got my first sale. And then I got another sale and another sale and another sale. Another one, another one, another one. It started happening like a whirlwind. And my main goal for the day, like my first goal was just make a sale. That happened. My second goal, which I really didn't think I could reach was get back the amount of, like break even, get back the amount of money that I paid to have a spot here. And after about two hours, I was thinking about the, you know, the transactions that people did on Venmo. And then I was looking at the cash that I had. And I was like, let me add this up. I think I, I think I might've done it. And I looked and I had already surpassed. I'd already made a profit. That was like very emotional for me. Like I, I cried. Um, I was holding back tears because I'm like, you know, out there and it's super hot and nobody got time to be crying when it's hot like that but I was very proud of myself um and I was I was just really really grateful that um people you know the economy right now is complete shit and to have people come out and buy my silly little stickers and art it really was 
kind of mind-blowing. I'm still just so grateful to everybody who bought something and like I know you don't realize it but like sometimes just going up to a booth and buying a sticker can totally make somebody's whole day. And then if you go the extra mile and you post about it on social media that's like unbelievable. As a small business owner that is so helpful and I just appreciate everybody who does that. Um, but yeah so I did end up making a profit. Not a huge profit, but I made a profit. And uh, that was more than I ever thought I would do. For my very first market, um, you know, th I didn't have a lot of stuff. I mean, I had a lot of stickers. Um, and I had about 15-ish tote bags that I made. And I also had some shirts. And I did sell a couple shirts, which I was super excited about. And I had people actually requesting shirts and they, I, you know, gave them my business card, you know, contact me through the form of my website. Um, we can definitely do customs, you know, I'm, I'm totally down for that. So that was really, uh, really cool too. My main thing was stickers and obviously in the future I would like to have more things. I'd like to have washi tape. I would like to, um, you know, have more apparel and things like that. I definitely, I had a lot of stickers, which is my main thing, so... Um, that was good. I felt good about the amount that I brought. I felt good about my tote bag display. I had my art prints and um, I did sell a few of those. Not many, but a, a few. So that was exciting. But yeah, so I, I did make a profit. And uh, to me, that was a huge win. Again, it would have been a win for me if I just broke even. But I made a profit and I was super excited. So thank you so much to everybody who, who stopped by. And now I'm gonna go into just my advice if you're thinking about selling at a market, whether it's an art show or like a farmer's market, um, you know, any kind of thing like that, there's all different names for them. But if you see, you know, somebody's looking for vendors uh, and you're thinking about applying, here's just my kind of thoughts. Do I think it's worth it? Judging like how many things you should bring and stuff like that, the, the must haves and then also uh, a few things that I wrote down that I would change for next time. First of all, if you're thinking about selling in a market, um, I would recommend not doing what I did, <laughs> which is going away from home, which adds another level of stress because like if you leave something at home, you can't just like easily come back and pick it up. Uh, I would recommend finding something local uh, or at least semi-local and kind of starting small which again, I did share the booth with my friend. So like, I know it wasn't like fully me, but I felt like, okay, I can do this. I can, I can start at a big market in Philly like this. Um, I just, something about it just felt like I need to do this. So I did, but I would recommend starting small and starting local. If you are interested and it's something you really think you want to do, I highly recommend it. I think that it's obviously going to depend. There's a lot of different factors, you know, uh, one of the biggest being, you know, a barrier to entry for some people can be the fee. And I know it greatly depends on where you are. If you're at an event like a Comic-Con or something like that, the fee is probably going to be pretty high. But it depends. It depends on where you are, uh, where you're located, and what kind of event it is. So definitely check on that. Um, for this market in particular, it was, I believe, $90 uh, for the specific booth that I had and there's different like sizes of booths and things like that so definitely look into it some of them especially if you go local and it's something a little smaller like a local town farmers market it's probably gonna be lower um there's even some that you know whether it's like a new business or somebody's just trying to get more people to come and get like new vendors sometimes they run specials and they say hey we're not charging anything just bring bring your own table bring your own stuff and set it up so definitely uh, look into that don't start with something that's got a really really high fee because you probably you'll probably just be disappointed and feel like you spent too much because when you're first getting started and you're building your brand it's going to be really hard to like make back say your booth fee is like a thousand dollars depending on what you sell uh, it's going to be kind of hard for you to make that back uh, at your first market not saying it can't be done it can definitely be done but it'd just be more difficult um, I would also recommend not waiting until three days before to buy a canopy or tent if you are going to be selling outdoors. Um, I wasn't originally going to have one and I thank God that I did. I went in the Facebook group. So I recommend if there's a Facebook group for like local sellers, 
uh, for, you know, for this one, there was a group that was specifically for um, people who were selling at this market. So I joined it and I just did a post in there and I was like, hey guys, I'm really torn. These canopies slash tents are kind of expensive, but I figure if I buy it now, you know, it's something I can use over and over. And I'm just like, do I need one? It doesn't say it's required. And people were like, you're going to want one because without one, without shade, the heat is going to be just unbearable. And then not to mention if there's a random thunderstorm or something like that, and you have paper products like I do, that's going to be a disaster. So definitely get a tent or a canopy. Um, I'll put a picture of the one that I got. I just got it on Amazon. I definitely did my research. This is the one I landed on. I definitely recommend it. I had no issues. Jimmy and James set it up for me because uh, I'm short and it was a little difficult for me uh, to set it up. So keep that in mind. If you have somebody you can bring, definitely do that. But yeah, I, I definitely was happy with it. And if you have, like, if you don't have the money or you think that, like, you're not really sure if this is something you're going to use again, ask one of your friends, see if somebody has one um, to borrow. Because sometimes people have them just for, like, they set them up for their kid's birthday party in the backyard or they have it to like bring to the beach or whatever just check you know check with a friend people in your neighborhood and see if somebody has one you could borrow another thing that uh i would recommend and this is something i did not do i would recommend having either a one of those fanny packs that where you can like organize your cash money or have a little lock box or a cash register i did not have that um, I wasn't really sure, you know, how many people were going to pay like Venmo and card versus cash. It was, it was about like 80% Venmo, which I prefer because it's just, it's really easy, but I do like cold hard cash as well. So I, I'm, I meant I prefer Venmo to like a credit card. It's just, it's easier. It's an easy transaction with the customer. I have my QR code right there. They scan it, they put it in, it's done. There's also an option on there for, for them to uh, tip. So that's really uh, convenient as well but uh, definitely bring something to organize your money because I had a binder and it just like, like a three ring binder with these sleeves in it and like it worked but it was not organized and it was a hot mess so uh, for my next one I'll definitely be having some sort of little cash register and it doesn't have to be fancy it really doesn't it doesn't have to be some crazy expensive ca like I've seen people use like a, a Barbie cash register which is very fitting right now so just a, a way for you to easily organize your bills and make sure you have change for people because I kind of screwed that up a little bit in the beginning but thankfully I got enough that it worked out but it was uh just another level of stress that I didn't need like not having the right bills to give change um so definitely do that uh Venmo is what I recommend for you know obviously some people are going to want to pay with card Personally, I don't yet have a square reader. I don't have, you know, an actual physical reader for you to put your card in. However, there are ways around that. Um, and I do have an app called Found where you can like create an invoice and people can put in their card information. Um, it does, it makes the checkout process a little, you know, it kind of slows it down a little bit. And I would have preferred to have a card reader. I just couldn't get one in time. And I was trying to decide, do I want to like, go through Shopify and use theirs or go through Square. I wasn't really sure. So I I didn't end up getting one, but I only had like three people use a card. And uh, most people have Venmo. I, I The majority of people have Venmo. So uh, it really worked out. And if they didn't have Venmo, they had cash. But um, I would recommend having a card reader if you can. It just takes the stress off of you. If somebody says, can I use my card? And then you can just pull out the card reader rather than having to go on the app and make an invoice and I mean it works and it's a way for you to to do it if you don't have a card reader uh, but I would recommend having one something that I wrote down that I need to do for next time if you are vending outside and it's hot bring a fan bring 18 fans bring all the fans here here we go bring all the fans just just do it just do it bring the fans Oh, hi, it's like a week later. Uh, my camera died before, so here we are. Um, also, I have a new camera, uh, so hopefully it looks pretty good. I think it does, just from here. We'll see once I get to editing. Anyway, yeah, that was pretty much it uh, as far as the uh, advice for if you're going to do a market, bring fans, bring all the fans if you're going to be outdoors. Uh, make sure you have some way to, you know, uh, store your cash. Um, try to have, you know, enough change for people, 
try to have an easy way for people to use their cards. So definitely recommend getting like a square reader or, you know, using a point of sale system through Shopify. You can definitely do research on that. I'm not the person to to come to for that because I still don't have a card reader. Um, I, I definitely am gonna get one, but uh, Venmo, I highly recommend. It seems like a lot of people are using that, like a lot of markets that I just go to, it's like the standard. So I'm I'm not sure, like, it might depend on like what area you're in or whatever, but at least where I am, there seems to be a lot of people that are just strictly doing Venmo, just because it's easy. Um, but definitely, you know, prepare for, you know, try to accept as many types of payment as you can. At the very least, have cash and Venmo. You know, if you can't take card, it's not the end of the world. Again, like I only had like three people use a card um, at the market that I was at. So, I mean, definitely it sucks to have to turn a customer away, uh, but definitely, you know, try to you know, accept as many forms of payment as you can. But for your, when you're first getting started, you know, don't feel bad if you have to be cash only or if you have to be just cash and Venmo. Um, it doesn't cost anything to set up a Venmo account. So I definitely encourage you to, to do that. Overall, it, other than it, being so damn hot. It's too hot. It was a really, really great day. And again, I'm just so grateful and thankful uh, to everyone who came out and stopped by. And whether you bought something or not, just coming to say hi and check out my stuff really, really means the world. So thank you so much. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was entertaining and informative in some way. Uh, please let me know in the comments if you have any questions, if there's anything I didn't address that you're curious about, uh, or if you're just... I don't know, you just want to say hi. Just say hi in the comments. I'd really love to chat with you. Be sure to consider subscribing. It's free. Just tap that little button. Um, I'm really trying to grow my YouTube subscribers this year. It's one of my goals uh, for the, you know, latter half of 2023. I'm really enjoying filming and editing and I would really like to um, use this platform to connect with more people and uh, yeah. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoy. Um, I hope you have a great rest of your day. Be sure to follow me on Instagram, TikTok, all that stuff. I'm very close to a thousand on TikTok if you want to help me out there so I can go live. I'm working on setting up TikTok shop as well, so I will definitely be making a video on that. And be sure to check out my Patreon if you are interested. Um, I have, I'm currently revamping some of the tiers, uh, but I do have a sticker club that will not be going away where I ship you stickers every month and they are original designs by me that you can't get anywhere else and it's just a nice little envelope that you get every month that brings you a little bit of joy in your day and I really like to share that with you guys so if you're interested in Patreon um, there's a link in the description it's patreon.com slash Cassie Makes Art and you will also get um, a shout out at the end of every video which you're gonna see right now <music>